Welcome ITU faculty and staff. In this particular video presentation, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to set up your gradebook uh, for a new class that you're going to be teaching at ITU. So if you've never done this before, I'm going to walk through step by step um, so that you can figure out how to uh, create your gradebook. Now in order to uh, start in with your class preparation work, uh, you're going to need to access the um, LMS. Um, you can get to it simply by typing in on the on the um, address bar up here, you could type in lms.itu.edu and it will take you to the LMS screen, uh, which was the first screen that you were looking at a few minutes ago. Um, and it looks like my login information stayed. Or if you don't want to remember lms.itu.edu, if you can remember itu.edu, go to the www.itu.edu website and click on this little button up here on the top upper right hand side of the screen you'll see LMS login. If you click on that button it'll take you again to the LMS login. Now you're going to need a login and the login you're going to need faculty privileges which are a little bit different than students but both students and faculty see the same uh, see the same image or same view of your class so you don't have to worry about um, what it looks like. Um, and if you uh, want to automate things for you you can actually kind of leave yourself logged in or you can click this button here, Remember Me, after you've logged in. And uh, so enter your email address and your password to log into the system. And you're presented with your profile. Um, in another video, I'll demonstrate how to change your profile settings, but this one's going to be on the gradebook. Um, but before we can change the gradebook, we've got to find the class. Uh, that I'm interested in uh, changing. So I'm going to actually do this for one of my uh, spring 2012 classes. I'm going to do it for my Unix operating system class uh, because I need to do it anyway. So I'm going to click on uh, my courses over here on the left hand side of the screen. Um, in fact this is where you're going to get most of the um, features for the LMS. Everything is going to be everything you're going to be looking for is going to be over in this pane over here. And now uh, you do want to use Firefox. I am using uh, Firefox uh, web browser. Um, it doesn't work so well in um, Windows Explorer, uh, or inter excuse me, Internet Explorer. I can't even remember what it's called. I'm doing this on a Mac. Uh, you can do the same instructions apply for a Windows system. Um, it's basically just a web browser program. So click on uh, My Courses. My Courses will take you hopefully to a list of courses. And here's a for spring 2012, it appears that I've got these courses available um, that are lined up here. Let me make this a little smaller. You can see over here on the right-hand column where it says semester. You can sort of see, uh, again, uh, which term you're in. We have fall 2011, semester, spring 2012. So I want to look at, and uh, fortunately for us, it uh, kind of shows in... Uh, you know, ascending order. So the most well, the most current uh, semester is going to show up first for us. We can also use this tab over here to filter out per semester. But considering that most of the time we're going to be working in the current semester, uh, for setting up your class, just look at the top. So you don't have to look too far. And if I go down uh, look to entries, here we go. Here's my Unix operating system course. This is the one that I'm going to edit in this video um, because I have to do it anyway to set up my gradebook. So I have clicked on my Unix operating system class. And let me just give you a brief tour um, of the system. What we've got over here in the left-hand side of the screen um, is all of our menu options. So on the top, this is more the site navigation. We can get back to projects, courses, and most likely you're going to just go to my courses all the time. Go to the course catalog, course terms, um, you know, all the other different features. In terms of the course term, what we've got down here um, is the ability to set lessons, and this is uh, going to be a separate video. In this video, we're going to look at assignments. These are uh, what you're going to need to do. We can create quizzes and um, load and book information and other course resources, discussions, announcements. Uh, but for this particular video, we're going to focus on creating assignments, creating a grading policy, and looking at the grade book and making sure the grade book matches. There's also attendance features in here as well, um, and uh, you know a bunch of other options that uh, we'll look at in other videos. Um, so what I'm going to do to begin with is go out, um, and before you can do anything, you're going to need to create your syllabus. Hopefully you have your syllabus created already. Um, I've taught this class before, and I have my syllabus created. 
and my syllabus uh, that I'm going to use is for SCN 956 Unix Operating System. And let me just do a quick check here to make sure I've got the class set correctly. This is my Unix uh, Operating System course. This is on the top, Unix Operating Systems. Um, if I click the back button, it actually takes me back, but it's not a good idea to keep going with the back button um, for navigational purposes uh, because you might lose information. So it says 956-2. The dash 2 is indicating that it is a weekend section course. Um, and the, you know, the ones without the dashes, as for example, this course here is a weekday course. So the dash 2 means that that's going to be taught on the weekend. Um, so you know this is and it is a weekend course so now I have verified that uh, the last time I taught the course it was called uh, 952 and it is still called excuse me 956 and it is still called 956 so I've got the right class I'm going to edit it correctly um, which is you know not a bad way to start out with to begin with and I've got my generic syllabus my syllabus is going to have my course description and all this other information learning student learning outcomes textbook information but this is the part I'm going to set up in this particular video is the grading. So for my particular course, I'm going to have a final exam. And it's going to be one comprehensive exam that's going to count towards 25% of my uh, course grade. And it's going to be given during the final exam schedule. It's going to be given in class, uh, which means I'm not going to actually have an entry for an assignment in the LMS, but I'm going to create one anyway uh, because I'm going to put the scores for the final exam because I want everything in the gradebook. So I'm going to be putting the scores for my final exam in the gradebook. I have the CSLO Course Student Learning Objective Essay, which is really my midterm for the course. Um, check with your department chair as to um, how they prefer you do your Course Student Learning Objective Essay. But you have, a, you have some academic freedom. You can set it up in a certain way. And if you're not familiar with what this is or what this concept is, um, I'll save that for a different video as well. Uh, but Course Student Learning Objective Essay is really a replacement for my midterm exam. And this is going to be a take home. And I'm going to actually put the assignment in the LMS. And um, I'm going to have uh, projects. There's going to be four projects throughout the course. And the projects are going to be worth five points each. And for my homework assignments, there's going to be six homework assignments. And they're all going to be worth five points each as well. So I'm going to kind of keep this screen handy. And, um, and this is kind of not, not a bad practice, actually, um, to prepare your class ahead of time, put together a little, you know, a little kind of summary of what assignments are going to be used for your course. Uh, keeps you organized, keeps your students organized, keeps all the expectations in line. So I'm going to go back to uh, Firefox. And uh, before I begin, I'm kind of, you know, just kind of trying to remember how I got final exam CSLO, which is really a midterm, but projects and homework. So those are my categories. So when I go in the LMS, the first thing I'm going to kind of look at is, let's get the lay of the land here. Let's see what we've got going on in here. I've got an assignments link. If I click on assignments, then I'm presented with this screen here. And this screen um, has assignment groups. Well, those were the assignment groups I just read off, final exam, CSLO. Um, assignments, projects, those are, would be kind of like assignment groups, but I don't have any. I have an other category right now, so I'm going to be adding some assignment groups. When I add the assignment groups, if I look under the grading policy link down here, I'm going to see that these assignment groups are going to be used consistently throughout the grading in the grade book. So I've just clicked on grading scale. Grading scale isn't something I'm going to, isn't something that I'm going to edit. It's just, it just looks like this. I could edit it if I wanted to. Uh, for automatic grading, I can kind of set the scale any way I want, but I would leave it sort of on the default at this point. Uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty standard, actually. It's the recommended grading scale for ITU. If I click on grade book, um, I'm going to get the place in which I can enter in the grades, but I don't actually have anything set yet, so it's going to look pretty generic. So I just clicked on grade book. When I click on grade book, I get a bunch of students on the left-hand side. And let me zoom out a little bit so you can sort of see what the screen looks like. And there's a little note on top. It says, looks like your course does not have any assignments or quizzes uploaded. Well, no, it doesn't. Uh, so please upload some quizzes and assignments to be able to use the grade book. Well, that's nice. OK. So in the grade book, I've got attendance, assignments, final, midterm projects. These are some generic categories that are going to change when you create some categories that are going to be used for your particular course. 
as an example, if you looked at my metrics here, you may decide to grade on attendance, but I don't have anything in here for attendance. I'm not going to grade on attendance as a computer science course. So if they, you know, I'm going to require attendance, but I'm not going to allocate any part of the grade for it. Um, but I'm going to have projects. I'm going to have homework and stuff like that. That's going to be counted. So I don't have that, but it's in my grade book. Uh, so don't be alarmed and confused when you look at this and go, well, I don't want to grade on attendance. This doesn't necessarily say that you have to. This is just a generic template that's set up for when the gradebook opens up that gives you an example of what it's supposed to look like. So let's create this so um, it meets what you want to do for your particular course. We create that in terms of the grading policy. The grading policy is step number two. So we need to create the assignments first, and then we can edit them in the grading policy. And the grading policy sets the weights for each one of the assignments. So we're going to sort of see how this comes together by starting with the assignments first. So I'm going to click on, and this is kind of step number one, click on assignments. So click on your assignments link and you're presented with this blank kind of non-friendly looking screen in my opinion. So. One of the things you might also notice in this particular screen, there's a small little add button. I'll make it bigger so you can see it. But on your screen, there's some small little add buttons in the upper right hand corner of the screen here. And obviously, as the LMS is continuously being worked on, I'm going to highly recommend that we change that. Uh, make them a little bigger. Let me make them a little bit more obvious uh, You know, as we make improvements. But right now what you're looking for is an add button. I'm going to press this add button up here because I want to I want to create some assignment groups. And those are the groups I just showed you in my syllabus. So I clicked on add and I'll wait for a few minutes here. And yeah, I believe something is going on. I see this. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Be patient. So a new assignment group. Well, I'm going to call this one, I'm going to start at the beginning here. And the beginning had uh, final exam. Well, let me start with my final exam. I'll do that one first. It doesn't really matter what order you put this in. So I'm going to say my new assignment group here, make this a little bigger so you can see what I'm typing, is going to be called final exam. What percentage am I going to allocate to my final exam? Well, I'm going to allocate 25%. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to put 25%. And then I'm going to click this little nicely, you know, green colored create button. When I hover my mouse over, it turns green. I just noticed that. And so now I have a final exam. And over here, I've got a little notice that pops up that says assignment group has been successfully created. Uh, one thing you might notice is if you try to click on this to remove the notice box, it doesn't go away uh, right now. Uh, so don't worry about that at this point. Don't try to close it, just leave it alone. But I'm going to go back and uh, underneath this little box, there's a, I have to press that add button again. Uh, so the button, the box doesn't go anywhere and we can't actually get rid of the box. But underneath the box, we can press add. And I just pressed add again. And now I'm back to my screen again. For another one, well, let me go back to my list because uh, I can't remember anything. CSLO is going to be 25%. Projects are going to be 20% and homework is going to be 30%. So it's a CSLO 25%, which is really a replacement for my midterm. So I'm going to go CSLO and I'm going to say 25%. And you don't have to put a percent sign in here at all. Just put a number in here and then press create. And now I have final exam in CSLO. Let's see if I can remember. Uh, no assignments have been added. Oh, that's fine. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to go back to add again underneath that little thing here, the little notice. And uh, what was it? Projects. <sighs> I was going to say, someone remind me, but you guys can't talk to me. I can only talk to you. Uh, projects, which were, oh no, I can't remember. Let me go back. Projects. This is why you probably want to print this out and keep it handy. Projects are 20%. Homework is 30%. All right, so projects, 20%. I'm going to put 20 in here. I have a really bad memory. So I'm going to go, okay, create. And what do I call the last category? Homework. Homework is 30%. So I'm verifying that this is here. I'm looking over here. It says assignment groups have been successfully created. I'm clicking on this add again. 
underneath that notice. And uh, what was it, homework? Homework. Let's just call it homework. And that was 30%. And then I'm going to press OK or create. So now you can kind of see how other, which used to be 100%, has now changed to zero. And now I have final exam at 25%, CSLO at 25%. Have projects at 20 and homework at 30 and by no means don't use this as an example of what you should do for your course this is just my teaching style uh, you may do anything you want or what your department uh, requests for you to do so you might notice this is no assignments have been created no we haven't we just created those assignment groups and um, the best you know the easiest my best advice for you is create your syllabus using these assignment groups and then take those assignment groups and just do what I just did put them into the LMS so no assignments have been created so let's create some assignments and over here in the assignments category and it's really hard to tell let me zoom out a little bit it's kind of these are our separate groups when we're all done we're gonna see this and we're gonna see another one down here that sort of looks like this so we have assignment groups on the top and we have assignments on the bottom assignments belong in the assignment groups as an example for my final exam, I only have one. It's going to be an in-class assignment. For my CSLO, I only have one. It's going to be a take-home. For my pro, and I'm not going to upload anything today. I'm just going to set the grade book up for you. In my projects, I'm going to have four of them, and they're going to be five points each. In my assignments or my homeworks, I'm going to have some number of them. I can't remember off the top of my head right now, and they're going to be something. They're going to be worth something as well, each. So I'm going to select Add, and uh, as I press Add, I'm going to get a new screen that comes up that's going to be for an assignment Add. And what happened? As I pressed Add, mm, I have a strange feeling that I didn't get sent to the correct screen. So I'm going to close this for a second, go back into the EMS. Apparently, the Add button did not like me. Uh, so let me go back into my courses and click on Unix operating system. And if that happens, you know, just come right back in. Um, it's a work in progress. The system uh, has some interesting uh, idiosyncrasies to it so far. I'll call it that. I was in the assignment, so I'm going to go back to assignments. And you're going to see I have zero set up. I don't have any assignments yet. So I'm going to go assignments because I was just adding the assignments when I got tossed out. Now I'm going to go over here back and repeat my steps. No assignments have been created at this time. I see that there's an add button here and there's an add button here. The last time I pressed this one, that's when my screen went blank. I'm going to try it again. Oh, this time it worked. So, I had faith. So, the first thing I need to do for the assignment, and let's just start with the final exam as, a, uh, as an example. And I'm going to click this little arrow here. So, under grading policy, what is this? Well, this is a final. So I'm going to select final on the grading policy. And I'm going to call it final uh, exam. And this will, let me make this a little bigger so you can see it. I'm just going to put a brief description here under the description. Give it a title. Uh, this is what the title is going to show up with in your grade book. Uh, so this, uh, this will be where you can see your final exam score. The final exam will be given in class during the final exam week. So, good, that looks good. And uh, now I'm going to assign some points for it. What did I say? It was 25 points. I'm going to say 25 points for this assignment, which is going to take up my entire category. I only have 25 points allocated. Let me just make sure. Yes, 25 points. Just want to make sure so I don't have to go back and change it. Um, publish date. If I click on the publish date category, it's going to tell me, well, when do I want to publish it? Well, today's the 29th of December. Uh, why not? Let's just publish it right now. So if I wanted to wait, let's say, until the last week of the term to make it um, published. I can change the date. Um, I don't know when the date's actually going to be. Let me change the date though. I'm going to change it to uh, 2012 
And uh, let's stick it around to April. Let's do it uh, April 30th. So I selected April 30th. I'm going to go done. And uh, what ended up happening is all I had to do to get to that point was just click in this box here. And it, it brought up, it brought this up. We also have hours and minutes that we can set. We can use the scroll bars to uh, modify this as well. Or we can type in the box. You can go in here and say, well, let's see, I want this to be uh, the 29th instead. So we can go like that. It's pretty flexible. The due date? Well, that's another interesting question. I'm actually just going to manually change this one to, uh, let's see, let's call this 04... 29-2012. Now the assignment actually isn't going to really have a due date because um, you know it's going to be an in-class assignment they're going to take during the final exam week so but it's the red the little red dot here saying I need to put a due date in here. Other assignments are going to have due dates. Other assignments are going to have published date. The published date is when it shows up to the student so that the student can submit it. If you want to wait until the a week before the assignments due, before you put the entry in the LMS, that's when it gets published and it's visible to the students. Otherwise, it's probably not a bad idea to just make it all visible. So the day that you're creating it, I would use that as the publish date. And then the due date is going to be the last day that the student is going to be able to submit the assignment. If a student tries to submit the assignment past this particular due date, they're going to get an error that says the assignment has been expired and the system is not going to allow them to submit it late. Uh, so make sure the due date is set and that the students are aware of when the due date exists. So, um, Am I going to publish the assignment? Sure. I'm going to click on this publish assignment. Publish assignment just makes it visible. If you don't click this, it will be hidden and students will not be able to see it. Uh, so publish assignments, yes. And then uh, check if this is going to be an in-class assignment. It will be an in-class assignment, which means I'm going to be able to add the grades to the grade book without the students actually submitting any work, uh, which is interesting. So, Other assignments, the student actually has to submit the assignment before you can actually grade it. So, And then I'm going to click on Create. And then uh, what I've got, uh, hopefully, in the next few minutes is not a white screen, but maybe a screen that shows the assignment. Uh, so let's see. I thought I clicked on create. Let me click on it again. Okay, looks like this time it's working. I see some activity going on this time. So that happens to you after you click on the button, you know, click on it again. Um, be patient. Um, system I wouldn't call, you know, the fastest. So we have one error. One error prohibited the assignment from being saved. What was this error? Uh, there was a problem with the following fields. The title has already been taken. Okay, I probably have a final exam somewhere created for something. So here's the interesting thing about the naming convention. All of the names that you use for groups, for category groups, assignments, they all have to be unique. So I'm just going to put this one together, take out this space and um, see if that one works. So, or I could put a space, like a little dash or something in there. So I'm gonna call it final exam this way. Uh, and I'm gonna press on create. And then final exam has already been taken. So there's a problem with the following fields. The title has already been taken up here. Okay, so let's just call this final E. I know that one hasn't been taken. Final E has not been taken. Right, I'll go EX. There we go. That has not been taken. So I'm going to go create. And that worked. So in my assignments, I have, I have final exam right here. The name is already being used, which is why you can't repeat the name. Um, and that might change in the future because I'm also going to request that of the nice development team uh, to make it a little bit user friendly, you know, to make it more user friendly. And then, you know, obviously, I'm, this is not a complaint video, uh, but I do have a, you know, you'll notice as I go through it, there are some things I don't personally feel, and you're going to have your same issues, um, maybe different ones, um, that me could, you know, possibly use some improvement. Um, so anyway, but I'm not critiquing it in this video, that's not the purpose. So, uh, let's go back, get focused again. So I have my final exam, and here's my assignment group. It's 
I make sure the group matches and the group that I've got assigned here is final. So in the in the um, grade book, and if I go to the grade book right now and I look at it, I'm not really quite done yet. So if I click on the grade book and I I just clicked right here on the grade book and um, I see what's being populated. I should possibly see 25 points allocated to the group final exam. And I don't. Right now it's kind of messed up uh, because it's not going to look right yet until you have everything set. So if you go here and you go, well, this is 20% right now. Huh, you know, what's wrong with that? Uh, well, the issue is you're not quite done yet. Uh, we haven't finished. We're only halfway in the middle. So it's, this grade book isn't going to look good. is isn't going to look right until we're done. Because of the assignments, we've only added one assignment, as we can see it here. So let's go back and add the rest of the assignments. And I'll try to go through this a little faster so uh, it doesn't bore you completely. I just clicked on the assignments link, by the way. And I'm waiting for the assignments screen to come up. Let's not click on it again. Let's see. And uh, I see it says waiting, and it looks like it's moving. So, a little button going up here. So, I'm going to wait for a few minutes. Oh, connection was lost. Okay, let me try this again. Uh, of course, I picked a day in which I believe oh, I'm back to the back to the IT website. So, let me go back and log in again. And this happens to you just log in again. Okay, um, this is a non-graphical view of the website, um, and I can see, kind of see, this is the, uh, and maybe this is what I was fed with before and I just didn't notice it. Uh, I'm going to click on my courses again and see if I can get the graphics back. This is a, yeah, there we go. It was like a non-HTML version of this site is what I was looking at. So I'm going to go back into the Unix operating system, and then I'm going to hope this time that, uh, let me close this window up here. Hope this time that we can get through this. I'm back in Unix and I'm going to click on assignments. And let's just finish up the assignments. See if I can get through this part of it. So I'm going to go back and uh, let me just do this real quickly um, so I can finish out the rest of the assignment group. So I'm going to click on add. And I'm clicking the add button that's in the assignments section. And uh, the next item in my group was that CSLO essay. So I'm going to put this under SLOs. And I'm going to call this a, a CSLO essay because I know that hasn't been taken. You can put a description in here. Uh, here is where you can upload. You can also put the assignment description in here as well. Or you can add files to it. You know. Anyway, this is, this is where you're, you can upload your CSLO essay. Okay, good. Points assigned to that are 25. Publishing date, I'm going to keep it as today. The due dates, oh, let's just make it, uh, actually change it to December of 2012. There we go. They have an entire year to turn it in. Uh, publish it, yes. A check if this is an in-class assignment. It isn't. They're going to upload it. Now, when I do it, I can clicked on here, let's say if I have a Word file that has my CSLO essay in it, I could click Add Attachment and browse and actually put the CSLO essay here. Or I can use this assignment description box up here and actually put the assignment up here. But I'm creating the assignment in the system. And as I create the assignment in the system, what? because this is not an in-class assignment, I'm going to either need to give them the assignment, and it's not a bad idea to put them in a Microsoft Word file and then upload the Word file, because obviously you can do a lot more in a Word file and upload it than you can um, in this particular window. So, but not right now, I'm, I'm going to put a fake assignment in here. Says, so, you know, this is where you can upload your assignments, and then uh, I'm going to press create. And so we have our one assignment that is uh, of the CSLO essay right here, and then it's following in the assignment group. Here we have the group of SLOs, which is what's going to show up in the gradebook. Um, so now I'm going to go back and I'm going to add another assignment. So I'm going to press this add button again away over here. I probably should move the add buttons over maybe. And what do I have? I have projects. Uh, so this one's going to be a projects. Here we have projects. And I'm going to put it in the projects category. And this is going to be project one. And uh, 
I'm just going to put project one in here to save us a few times. And let me go back, actually. I don't remember my projects. My projects were, I have four of them worth five points each. Very good. Very good. That's 20% category. Uh, so this is only worth five points. And, uh, you know, I'll publish it today. Let's just, you know, I'll just put a fake 2012 in here. Publish it. I create. So I got one. I have to do this four times, which is why I kind of speed it up a little bit. Otherwise, you're going to be bored. <laughs> so we have uh, projects five here. So let me add another one. I have to put four of them in here. So this is, an, again, another project. This is going to be project two. And uh, project, project two. I guess I can see what I'm doing here. Another one that's worth five points. Uh, published today. Uh, make it do a year from today. Okay, good. Publish it now. Okay. Press create. Okay, so let me add uh, project number three. Also in the project group. Projects. Project three. Add project three. Points five. Publish date to today. Uh, let's see, 2012, done, uh, publish it, yes, publish it now, create. And we put project four in here. Let's see, projects, projects, so let's say it's a bit, you know, you only have to do this once per course, so once you do it, uh, you know, put project four in there, five points. You don't ever have to do it again, <laughs> so it's just a little tedious in the beginning. And I'm gonna say uh, publish it. So I'm gonna press OK. And unfortunately, in order for the gray book to look correctly, you have to kind of finish everything, uh, which is why I'm going to go ahead and do everything. So I've got project one, two, three, four, and these actually show up as separate assignments that can be graded. In fact, if you look at it over here, uh, status is it's not available. Uh, perhaps let's take a look. I wonder why it says not available. Uh, if this happens to you, then you can come over here and say, well, let's edit this for a second. Why is it not available? And the other two are open. And I can say, hmm, uh, maybe a uh, good question. Uh, I was thinking maybe it was the dates, published dates. Um, hmm, let's see. Let's publish the date. Let's go back a day. Let's go back to the 14th of December. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, let's just do it this way. 14th of December. I uh, did due date. Hmm, 2012. Interesting. Um, okay. I'm not quite sure why it says it's not available. Assignment overview. Okay, good. Uh, let's go back to all the assignments. Looks like I was taken back to an assignment overview screen. Uh, no, now it says it's open. Let, let me go. Let me just try this one again. I'm not quite sure um, why it's not available. This one's not going to be available because it's a take home. It's not take home. Excuse me. It's a final exam that's going to be performed in class. And you can see the categories. This says take home, take home, take home. This is in class. Um, let me go and make sure that these, if the status says not available, it means the student isn't going to see it. And I have the start date, and I have, uh, maybe the start date is past the start date of the server or something, I don't know. Um, the end date was 2012. Let me just go back here and edit this one again. I'm not quite sure why. In fact, I wonder if I can just, you know, maybe just press save again. Maybe just didn't like it. I'll just press save again. See if it changes the status. And here I have assignment overview. Okay, good. Let me go back to assignment, all assignments. Oh, well now it's changed. Now it has changed project one and project two. Interesting. Uh, well, let's just leave the status alone at this point. I'm not quite sure. Uh, 
it's probably logic with the dates I'm thinking um, no I haven't said for 2012 maybe it's um hey, let me let me try something else here I'm gonna actually play around with the dates here and uh, in the published date let's make it now and see what happens um, I press saved Well, now these statuses have changed. Project 1, 2, I, just, I edited project number 4, but let's just leave it alone at this point. It appears to be a bug in the system uh, for why those dates don't change as they should. Uh, but let me go back up here and um, finish up the configuration. So I've done the final exam, I've done the CSLA, I've done the projects, and last but not least, I have the homeworks to put in. So let me just refresh my memory about the homeworks. And the homeworks, I have six homework assignments that are worth five points each. So I'm going to quickly put in those six assignments worth five points each. So I'm going to go over here and add. And these are going to look just like the other ones. Under the grading policy, it's going to go under assignments now. And um, the assignment group is going to be... Ah, have I created an assignment group? I have grading policy for assignments. And assignment group is homework. I put it under homework, so if you remember right. And it's going to show up under... It's in the assignments category. And the title, this one's going to be um, Assign 1. And let me just go ahead and put these in. I'm not going to worry about whether they're published or not. Uh, what are they, worth five points each? I have six of them. Sorry about that. Six of them worth five points each. Let's make sure. Yeah, I have to make sure I get the numbers right, actually. It's going to say now. 2012. Uh, because if it doesn't add up right, the grade book's not going to show right. Publish assignment. Yes. Create. And uh, let me zoom out so you can kind of see the whole thing. And let me, uh, so I have the first one in here. It's worth five points. Um, I'm going to say um, create another one. Let me put six of these suckers in here. So let me see. Just, uh, and it's going to be uh, assignments group. It's going to be homework. This is going to be assignment two. And uh, for the points, it's not going to be another five points. Publish date. Let's publish it now. I'm pressing the now button. Done. Uh, and I'm going to go 2012. 12, 12. Maybe it can't go for more than a year. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I'll put it on uh, March 2012. Let's see. Publish assignment. Yes. I'm going to create. And... Uh, no, assignment was not available. Status, that's interesting. I wonder what the status means. Uh, anyway, assignment three. Let's go add assignment three in there. Assignments, uh, homework, assignment three. Do six of these. Uh, it looks like I'm going to do six of these. Uh, so let me speed it up a little bit. Uh, let's see. Jam. 2012, January, done. Publish assignment. Okay. Three more. I'll just quickly do three more. Assignment, homework. Assignment four. Five points, done. Uh, let's change this one. I'm going to have this one due in uh, March. There we go. Publish. I know, it's kind of tedious. Oh, we have an error. There's already been a problem with fields. The title has already been taken. Uh, let's see. One error prohibited the assignment from being saved. Uh, assignment policy. Uh, do I have an assignment for already? Uh, all right, let's... Uh, I'll make a lower A. Let's see if that happens. Uh, it has already been taken. So I changed the, uh, I didn't like assign four. Uh, perhaps I already got that one in there. I, lo and behold, I do. Uh, so I'm going to change this one then. I'm going to make it assignment five. That's pretty nice. It actually uh, told me the uh, name had already been taken. So this is really assignment number five, actually. And I can just easily go in there and change it. So that was not a bad message. And uh, when you edit it, you get the assignment overview. You're taking it to the screen after I 
because I pressed the edit button and it took me back to the screen. I'm going to press all assignments again to go back to the other screen. It doesn't actually return. When you press the edit over here, it doesn't actually return you to this screen. It takes you to that other screen. Uh, so I got one, two, three, four, five. Ah, lo and behold, one more. Let me just do one more here. Assignments. Homework. I'm going to call this assignment six because I can count now. Uh, let's see. Uh, done. Oops. Hmm, let's see. 2012, February. Done. Publish assignment. Yes. Create. Now I think I'm all done. Let's just do one more check on it. When the screen comes up, here it is. So what do I have got? I've got a 1, 2, 3, 4 times 5 is 20. And then I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of them. 5 is 30%. So I got 30, 20. Number of assignments up here. Projects are interesting. Why do I have... I've noticed up here I have number of assignments, six. But the projects... Let's make sure I've got the assignment groups correct here. So I'm going to go through here and look at project number one and edit it for a second here. And see if I have projects set correctly. Because um, the number of assignments aren't showing up. I should have at least one in the final exam category. Uh, so... I press the edit button and it is showing projects which is good in project one it looks pretty that looks pretty good so i'm gonna leave it alone i'm just gonna press cancel because i don't want to change anything on here it was set up correctly and why that's not showing up maybe the screen needs to be refreshed or something in the edit we can edit these categories by clicking on the pencil and it will edit it and i'm not going to want to edit it so i'm going to press cancel but what I've just done is I've set up the assignment groups and I've set up the assignments. And uh, don't be concerned about the status information, obviously. I'm not quite sure. These have been changing periodically. These all say that they're not available. Interesting. And the number of assignments aren't showing up correctly. But uh, don't be really concerned about that. And as I mentioned before, this is not a critique video. Uh, but I have 12. And if I kind of roughly add them up together, I have six assignments. Six, so seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's perfect. That's the number of items I just added. I just added a dozen items. So now I'm going to go into the grading policy down here. I'm going to click on that real quick. And I have a connection lost. So I'm going to try and reload the page. Uh, looks like it's going to load this time. So it's a connection problem loading the page. All right, I'm going to close it, go back into the LMS. That happens just, you know, close the scan and now I'm back. I'm going to go uh, my courses. And I'm going to go Unix Operating System. And I'm going to go back down here to Grading Policy, which is I kind of just wanted to check the grading policy. Here I am. And uh, now I'm going to edit the categories in the grading policy so that they show up correctly in the grade book. So for my grading policy, these are kind of set as a default. It's not going to match the assignments. Obviously, it doesn't match any of the work that I've done so far. Because my CSLOs, as an example, I'm going to click on Edit here on my CSLOs. My CSLO is actually 25 points, not 20. So Publish Grading Policy, yes. I'm going to go, OK, Create. And then over here, it says the grading policy was successfully updated. I don't have any quizzes, so I'm going to set my quizzes to zero because there are no quizzes. And my projects, I believe the projects were 20%, so I'm going to go edit here. I can actually remember it at this point, 20, <laughs> which is good. And I believe my grading policy for the midterm is zero because my CSLO is my midterm, so I'm going to go zero. And what I'm doing is I'm setting the grading policy to match what I have in my assignments. My final exam is 25%, not 20. So I'm going to go 25% here. And my attendance is going to be zero. Because I'm not grading on attendance, although I am taking attendance, I'm not going to grade on it. I don't feel college students should be graded on attendance, but that might just be my own personal opinion. In my assignments, those are going to be, what, 30%, I believe? So those were 30%. I want the total to equal 
maximum 20. I wonder what it was says maximum 20. Um, maybe I've made a calculation error. Uh, I got 25 and 25 is 50. 30 and 20 is uh, 30 and 20 is 50. So I should equal to 100. And uh, let's see, 30, 50, 50, 100. I do. Very good. So now um, I have set my assignments. And uh, when I go back through, I can uh, verify that my assignments are set correctly. I have assign assignment groups configured. And uh, homework, well, those are the assignments. Maybe I should have called them assignments for consistency sakes. 25, 25, uh, 30, 20. And I've got the category set correctly here, the final 25, CSL is 25. Got it. So now I'm ready to start looking at the grade book. So I'm going to click on the grade book link. And hope it comes up. It should be. It looks like it's working. I see this little round thing going over here. I don't know if that round thing happens all the time. It says connecting up here. Unix operating system. Here we go. This looks like my grade book. And you can see in my grade book now that I have assignments at 30%, which is correct. And I have my final exam at 25%. I don't have a midterm, that's on zero. But I do have projects, and the projects are set at 20%. And I have a CSLO at 25%. Uh, so I have a one. Uh, the attendance is just going to sit here. It's at 0%, so they're not going to get any scores for it. The total is going to be sitting at zero until something gets added in. Uh, but uh, let me make sure. I think I'm missing something. No projects. Projects are there. Assignments are there. So it's 30, 50, 50, 50. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, so this is what my finished gradebook looks like. And as you can see, I've got categories that are here that don't, um, you know, they might go away. As, as they make improvements to the gradebook, these categories that you're not using, the 0% categories might uh, go away. Um, but in any case, don't be concerned with them. What you're concerned with is when a student submits an assignment. Um, in fact, let me go back to the assignments menu real quick here. Your gradebook at this point, by the way, is completely configured and ready to go for your class. That's all you have to do. Well, that seemed kind of tedious. You have gone through the labor of creating your gradebook. And so I can kind of still see that this doesn't really line up. Uh, but these are all open now, which is fantastic. Uh, so those ones that weren't available are now available. Fantastic. And uh, maybe it's a timing issue. Who knows? Uh, but if you do have a problem with it, you can always call the uh, and contact the LMS people and or the tech support people, and they can help you. And there's probably uh, probably good explanation for it. But in any case, um, I can kind of go through and I can still edit. And then up here, I can go through and I, and I can edit up here as well. And then when a student submits an assignment, I'm going to be able to grade it. So as you can kind of see, and the reason why I'm coming back is I want to show you how the grading would work for the final exam. So students haven't submitted any assignments yet. So over in the right-hand column where it says Actions, once a student has submitted an assignment, you're going to get something in here that says Grade Assignment. It's not showing up right now because nobody has submitted anything. I'm, I just created those categories and those assignments a few minutes ago. My term hasn't even started yet. So nobody has submitted anything yet, so nothing's going to show up here. But once students start submitting work, you can come back into the Assignment section, which is where I am right now, and you'll see for the different categories, each one of the, and gives you the ability to grade it. So right now I can press on speed grader to enter in. Let's say, for example, the course is ended, well, the course is coming to an end, and the students have submitted their final exams, and their final exam scores are ready to be turned in. So for each one of my students here, I can assign them a score here. I can say, you know, 25 points, you got 20. And, uh, you know, good job or something. I don't know. You know, you can put comments in on the right-hand side or you missed number one and number five. Um, and you can give them a score. And when you give them a score, oh, I hate to do this, but let me just do it for the student here. Uh, let me copy the student's ID, actually. And I'll make sure to change this. So let me give the student 25 just in case I forget to change it. Now I'm going to change it. So I've, I've signed the student a score of 25, and I've kept track of the student ID because I want to look them up in the grade book when I'm done. And on the bottom of the screen here, if I 
scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a save scores. And so I'm going to press save scores. And uh, to save the grade that I just entered in for that one student. And now it says you have successfully graded assignment for one student. Because I want to show you what the assignment looks like in the grade book. If I go back to the grade book, and uh, the way I get back there obviously is to click on grade book over here. Go back to the grade book. I believe I have clicked on it. I'll show you the full screen view. It is loading the grade book from the bottom. I'm waiting for LMS down here. Give it a few minutes. There we go. We're in the grade book. If I search on this student here, and um, oh, you can see it. Actually, it was the first student in my list, so I guess I didn't have to search on it. Now I can see here that the student has received 25 points. It's my first student here. And uh, over in the category over here, the total score for this particular student is that they have received 25 points. Because they submitted, well, they didn't submit. I, I you know, pretended like they took the final exam, and I put the final exam score in. So as you go through the course, this student is going to submit all of the other assignments, hopefully. And you'll be grading them the same way. You'll be going back to the assignments section. You'll be entering in the scores for each one of the assignments that this particular student has taken. And lo and behold, after the student has completed, let's say the student only completed um, two of the projects and didn't complete all of them, they're only going to get five points for the first one, five points for the second one, uh, five points for the third one, or, you know, and maybe they'll get 15 points in here instead of 20 or something and then uh, maybe five points for assignments. So whatever they have accumulated point-wise is going to show up here. And your total score over here is going to show up. So over here you can say, well, that's 25%. Well, the student here is going to get an F. And then, you know, you know, basically go through and assign grades for the student. And I want to take that F away. The student's going to kill me. So, And then if, if you're not satisfied with it and you want to delete it, you can always go back to the assignments menu. Let me do that for a second. And uh, I can come back there and say, edit, uh, you know, go back into the speed grader for the action. Why do they call it the speed grader? I'm not really quite sure either. Uh, but you know, I'm going to take away this 25 points here. The student really hasn't taken the final exam yet. So, uh, but let me, uh, let me save this so I don't forget. And uh, there was one last thing I wanted to show you. I cut and pasted uh, the student's ID as an example. Um, because you might notice here that this list is not in alphabetical order. Um, I gotta, or you know, the, the, maybe it's just the nature of the nature of the names at ITU. It's kind of, you know, I guess it is in alphabetical order. It appears to be in alphabetical order. Uh, so this must be a recent change upgrade. Nice. Uh, but sometimes it might actually be easier to find the student by the ID. So. I can paste that ID in the student ID and forget these. You don't have to put in the required first name and last name. Just press search. Those are little red things are kind of not are kind of deceiving. You don't have to fill this whole thing out. So put the ID in there and press search. And lo and behold, score at 25. 25. I thought I'd save this. Uh, let's take it and save the score again. It is possible. Uh, you have successfully graded assignment for one student. And my score keeps showing up as 25. Interesting. I want to make it zero. Well, it's a good thing I set it to 25. Just in case that score never goes away, the student will at least have an A. So, and this might just be, again, you know, it's a work in progress. Okay, so the score is still there after I saved it. Even though it says that you have successfully graded, it does won't let me go back. And if this particular thing happens to you, which is what I'm going to do when I finish this video, I'm going to contact the uh, support folks and tell them, hey, I'm changing a grade, but it's not saving. And uh, hopefully they'll be able to explain why. Um, so but, uh, let me just make sure. I'm not changing it. No, okay, it says so it's empty. And uh, let's see. Save. In any case, I'm not going to worry about that student's score. Wow. Um, but what I am going to, what I am going to kind of be concerned with towards the end of the course is making sure I get all my grading done 
and everything is reflected properly in the gray book. And again, if you run into a situation like this, the best thing to do is, you know, not to think it's your fault, but to uh, figure out why. Call, contact the support folks and uh, figure out, you know, they'll be able to e either report the problem and maybe somebody else is having the same problem, um, or they'll be able to fix it for you. So what I've just done for you in this video is walk through how to set up the gray book. So as you can see, my gray book is fully configured. I do have a, an attendance category I do have that's set for zero for some reason. I do have a midterm that's empty, and most of your categories that are empty aren't going to show with numbers. They're going to be they're going to be blank. And in the case of quizzes and midterm, it has zero percent. Um, attendance is just one of those categories that's going to show up with zeros unless they change it in the future. Uh, but it's for attendance tracking purposes. So in the next video. I will show you more things about um, the LMS, but this was your first introduction to the gradebook, and one of the first things you're going to want to do before you, uh, well, hopefully at the start of your course, maybe perhaps in the first week, is configure your gradebook. Um, otherwise, before you set your gradebook up, none of your students can submit any work into the LMS. Um, so, because when they're, what they're going to do is they're going to hit the gradebook, they're going to they're going to go into assignments. And they're going to want to do assignments, and they're going to they're going to want to submit assignments. And so, what they're going to see is is the ability to submit all of these things that you've created. And uh, this is interesting. At this point, I can see that I've got a submission of a final exam. I've got one of them in there still, um, which is okay. So, I, I'm going to have that removed, hopefully. So, um, <clears throat> as you go through, I would uh, you know encourage you to explore through the different options of the gradebook. Um, you can get information about your t teaching assistant from here who's been assigned to your course. You can click on attendance and uh, keep attendance records for your particular students. Um, eventually what you're going to want to do is set up your lesson plans. If you can click on the lesson, you'll see the ability, and I'll go through that in a different lecture, the ability to set up a schedule with lesson plans, with assignments and things. So. Hope you've enjoyed the video, and I hope you are able to set up your grade book. If you do have questions, feel free to call, or excuse me, feel free to email me, bhecker at itu.edu. I am more than willing to, uh, you know, go into your grade book if I can and take a look at it uh, and fix it for you, or at least answer some questions for you in terms of uh, why something's not showing up. Uh, so. Uh, and that's, you know, I, other questions I can't answer for you, like for why the student has 25%, I've deleted it twice, I don't know. But uh, in any case, don't be concerned with that. Just call support, have them fix it for you. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned uh, for another video on the LMS to show yet another interesting feature. Thanks for watching.